Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. It looks like the silver market is starting to stabilize. Let's explore. Stability, it's a word that we all kind of uh, want to embrace these days. It's been a pretty unstable last few months with the coronavirus, and now we have civil unrest in the nation. That's starting to subside a little bit now. So hopefully we can get back to some sense of normalcy. However, there's a lot of things that are uncertain for the future, uh, aside from the coronavirus and a uh, potential second wave, which is looking less likely. But there's a lot that happened over these last few months, and even beforehand, that really should uh, be very troubling and concerning to many uh, Americans and many people around the world as well. Modern monetary theory certainly is something to be concerned about. But that's later. Uh, they can do that for so long, and no one can predict when that will all come crashing down, if it ever will, before there's some sort of a reset in the system. But that's sort of a topic from another video but we're going to talk a little bit about the silver market. But before we get to that, let's talk about overall the precious metal prices today have corrective rebounds. And this article from uh, Kitco, we can see here the prices where gold is really getting close to tiptoeing right at the edge of the $1,700 level again. And silver is a uh, strong up uh, to uh, getting closer to $18 an ounce again. Uh, and platinum is a uh, up very strong uh, palladium is up even stronger over three percent climb and look rhodium's making a move now up over seven percent uh to eighty seven hundred dollars for the ask price but uh so this article here from jim wyckoff uh, says that gold and silver prices are higher in early u.s trading monday and upside corrections from recent selling pressure that has produced near-term chart damage in the gold market a shaky U.S. dollar on the foreign exchange market and a higher crude oil prices are bullish outside market forces working in favor of the metals market bulls to start the trading week. Still bearish for the safe haven metals is upbeat trader investor risk appetite recently that has been money flowing into the equity markets. August gold futures were last up $13.50 an ounce to $1,696.40, and July COMEX silver prices were up last uh, uh, about $0.41 cents at $17.89. Global stock markets were mixed in overnight trading. U.S. stocks indexes were pointed towards modestly higher openings when the New York Day session began. The NASDAQ hit a record high overnight, while the S&P 500 stock index hit a three-month high. I will say that the uh, the um, uh, stock, the Dow, I think, is up 400 points as of the recording of this video here. Businesses and major global economies continue to reopen, and that's lifting trader and investor spirits. However, the more social interaction in the past couple of weeks has caused an increase in COVID-19 infections in some U.S. states. Still, that could be just because more testing for infections is being done uh, than in the past weeks. Also, the civil unrest in the U.S. has turned much less violent and by far mostly peaceful. I will say, too, related to COVID-19 is that they're saying now that the the contagion factor has decreased and the potency of the virus is going down as well. The mu It's mutating to weaker st strains, which is a good news for sure. Because there are some pretty um, concerning symptoms for some, for some of this that's been going on. The marketplace is mostly shrugging off some stated reporting errors in Friday's shockingly upbeat U.S. employment report from the Labor Department. Those reporting errors made the report look more rosy than it would have been otherwise. We talked about that in a video. But the errors were not major. Friday's report suggested the U.S. economy will see a V-shaped recovery from the COVID-19 damage. We are likely to see the shortest U.S. recession on record, and uh, one mark, uh, said one market analyst. 
And I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to because I do um, take a little bit issue with the fact that it's not major. Uh, three full percentage point uh, difference to me is major. However, I think it's still uh, good news that to see some recovery of some of those jobs. Uh, that were lost for sure, but still, I do see it as a as a big enough um, error in the reporting that it should have been, um, um, I think, um, given to us and reported differently or noted differently on the reports there. But, anyways, Friday's huge miss by analyst economists on the jobs data in May raises questions on the accuracy of assumptions made by central banks, including the Federal Reserve. The past few months, important questions include what if central banks greatly misjudged the overall damage to their economies and the recovery rates? Did the central banks severely overreact on monetary stimulus packages, which could create bigger problems, inflation down the road? Well, I think we know the answer to that. I mean, good grief, overnight on a Sunday night, uh, the Federal Reserve dropped the rates down of over a point to a zero. And all this money that they've thrown out is, is absolutely crazy. Um, and the targeting and how they did that was done exactly the wrong way. In my opinion, I've posted my thoughts about that in prior videos. Um, in overnight news, economic data out of China was downbeat. China's imports in May were down 16.7% year on year. Exports were down 3.3% in the same period. The important outside market see the U.S. dollar index slightly lower early today and not far above last Friday's 11-week low. Meantime, non-mex crude oil prices are higher. You should start seeing gas prices go back over $2 a, a gallon soon. Hit a three-month high overnight and trading around $39.75 a barrel. The yield on the benchmark U.S. Treasury 10-year note is currently around the 0.91% level. Bond yields have risen significantly in the past few sessions. U.S. economic data due for release Monday is light and includes the Unemployment Trends Index. So here we can see the 24-hour spot. Technically, the gold bulls have faded as a, a price uptrend in the daily bar chart has been negated. Bulls' next upside price potential is to produce a close in August futures with solid resistance above 1750. Now, there's that, but the July futures uh, bulls have the firm overall near technical advantage. Silver bulls' next upside price objective is closing prices above solid technical resistance at the February high of $19.07. That's the key. That's what we're looking for here. There's where the normalcy begins. The next side downside price objective is for the bears. Is closing prices below support at 17 bucks, which you know that's that's pretty good news to see that that is the absolute bottom here. So uh, we'll see. This is the um, the now where it is. The silver markets begin to stabilize. Silver markets have gotten sold off over the last week or so, but during the Monday session, it looks as if we are trying to stabilize a bit, and that's the key here. Trying uh, will it remain stable? That's anybody's guess. Uh, we can hope for it. The silver markets have rallied here, according to FX Empire, a bit during the trading session, initially gapping higher on Monday. The market reached towards the $18 level, an area that has been both support and resistance in the past. The fact that the market pulled back from here, it is likely that the market needs to build up a little bit of confidence and strength in order to turn around to go to the upside. If we do break down the $18 level, then the market is likely to go looking towards the $18.50 level, possibly even the $19 level. And uh, that seems like such a far cry at this point to get to $19. And here some of us are saying $20, $21 is where we're going to be by the end of the year. We'll see. Uh, it's, it's less likely, though, unless things really do stabilize and people do get the confidence, as mentioned here. Silver markets continue to see a lot of volatility, but in the end, they are bu uh, in a bullish run as of late. Silver, of course, is being influenced by central banks around the world printing money as fast as they can, but there is also the concern about the industrial part of the equation. Very important to consider that as well, considering that over 60% of silver's use is in the industrial sector. At this point, the question is whether... Uh, 
or not, the economy is have opened up enough to push up sober demand by manufacturers. But right now, it looks highly likely that the silver market is going to rally due to one reason or another. Another thing is that coming into play is the fact that the U.S. dollar has gotten hit rather hard as of late, because that should also help um, sober overall. All things being equal, the market is likely to see a lot of buyers underneath at the $17 level, especially considering the 50-day EMA is starting to reach towards that level. And all things being equal, this is a market that also has support down at the $16 level. And it is only a matter of time before the buyers come back in the author's estimation. Look at the pullbacks as potential buying opportunities. Of course, that's always the case. Whenever there's pullbacks, it's always a buying opportunity. But the thing with silver is there's, when there's a pullback, um, usually there's an even greater pullback looming down the road. And that's the thing that has frustrated many silver stackers out there. But for now, it does look like that the silver market is starting to stabilize. So there you have it. Post your thoughts below. Fascinating indeed. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>